Hello, it's Scott Manley here. Now, uh, if any of you watch Nerd Cubed, you'll note that he did the insurance scam challenge, and someone said, could you do the insurance scam challenge? And, uh, yeah, I thought I would actually look at it, because it gives me a chance to talk about some of the other, in uh, some other interesting things here. So what is the nature of the insurance scam challenge? Well, you just take this stock Kerbal X, and apparently we ordered two of them by X, or we were sent two of them, and so... For various technical reasons uh, and scammy reasons, it was decided that the best thing to do was to smash one into the other. I, I have to say, I'm not sure who came up with this decision, but they would have to be a warped individual because these don't have, you know, automated control systems. They need a crew on board, as far as I can tell. So, yeah, it would be a manned or kerbled or kerbined or bald. Um, yeah, it would be a balls up, right? Uh, yes. <laughs> Now, Dan, in his infinite wisdom, decided that he wanted to go for maximum impact velocity and therefore sent his second spacecraft going around the planet in the opposite direction. Note that this is actually kind of dangerous because those uh, external boosters, as they're jettisoned, have a nasty habit of falling on top of the space center where they will no doubt wreak all sorts of other havoc. Uh, and require, and perhaps the insurance agency might take a little closer look at things. But regardless, we're going to put this in a, a hundred kilometer orbit. This is going to take a little more fuel because, of course, in this direction, it's going against the velocity of the planet's rotation. But easy enough. Anyway, you don't need to see all my circularization maneuvers. Just be sure that there were many of them as I tried to make things as close to circular as possible and uh, then tried to make sure that we had an encounter that was in a reasonable location. Suffice to say, after much trimming, we got ourselves our first approach. Very soon after, so how closely were these, gonna think, these things going to be? Well, we can just watch as it zips by at approximately 4 kilometers per second. 4.4 according to the target display. So it will be there, and thanks to slow motion, you can see that it moves past at about 1.7 kilometers distant. We have a bit of correcting to do here. The first thing we need to do is start to tweak the inclination to make sure the inclination uh, or the ascending and descending node is roughly at the point of the encounter. So after doing that, how close do things get? Well, watching it, 20, 19, 18, again, 4.4 kilometers per second. So that's a few seconds out. And that was very fast. What was it? Look at it in slow-mo. Yeah, it was about 350 meters before it disappears off in the other direction. Now, in the names of sanity, I decided to make this thing a little more agile, either for ditch half of the spacecraft. I mean, we were running low on fuel anyway. We couldn't recover that. But uh, yeah, this should be able to turn a little more. And of course, it has nice little legs that we can extend. It does make a slightly smaller target. But to be honest, being in the right place is more important than being really big. Uh, I can make corrections for hundreds of meters. I can't make myself much more than 100 meters. And we go for another approach, correcting madly at the last minute. 313 meters was what I got it down to. Now, I could have done this all day, getting the approach distance down lower and lower, but in this, instead, I decided to go with a technological approach, invoking MechJeb. Now, I wasn't going to get MechJeb to fly it, but it has a rendezvous planner, which tells you the separation at closest approach. You see here now, it's about 42 meters. I'm messing around with it as I'm trying to make it smaller. I don't know what way to fire my engines to make it smaller, but I take a guess and then see it happen, and that ends up, you know, ends up walking randomly towards the closest approach distance here, 39 meters, there we go, 20, 18 meters now, we can practically reach out and touch that, and of course lose our fingers in the process as that thing flies by, 7 meters, 5 meters, that is going to be a very close approach. And yeah, there we go. So we're getting in close. The next thing to consider is that in Kerbal Space Program, there's two types of simulation. There's the on-rail simulation and there's the physics simulation. There's a slight problem here. There's a lot of converting back and forth in between, between these two situations. And 
the conversion process loses precision. So what you'll find is that in physics mode, your orbit isn't exactly perfect, whereas on rails, your orbit is perfect. And the on rails approach or orbit is used to calculate the separation at closest approach. But your physics one, it's not quite so accurate. So you'll find that the separation just drifts naturally. Uh, because it's basically model, modeling your whole orbit in rectilinear coordinates rather than polar coordinates. It's not using Kepler's laws, it's using Newton's laws. So you need to keep correcting to get this thing down. You see, I got it into millimeters rather than meters. But very quickly, even if I don't do anything, the separation at closest approach is just going to continue to change. The other problem I keep running into is that it frequently switches nodes. It decides, no, you don't want that node in two minutes. We don't care about it. Let's go and take a look at the node on the other side of the orbit, because clearly you're far more interested in that since it's 20 minutes away. I'm sure there's some logic to it, but I'm darned if I can figure that out. Anyway, I just decided to use time acceleration, because when you're in time acceleration, you're on rails, and your orbit isn't going to change, it's going to be exact. So it flicks back, and I'm within 7 meters of where my target is. So I decide to start turning around and making some more corrections here. I'm going to start by correcting the plane a little here, or at least hoping to correct the plane. So just that, and that seems to make it go down, so that's bad. Let's try going retrograde and seeing what that does. Retrograde... Um, retro, nope, doesn't matter, that seems to be increasing things, in fact, my separation, whatever I'm doing, my separation is just increasing rather than decreasing, that's not good, 15 meters is moving me beyond the size of my spacecraft. For those of you who only think in terms of feet, 60 meters is about 50 feet, it is not a small distance by any measure. Okay, there, let's try going up. And there, actually, um, we got a small bit of feedback for a second that looked good. And then, of course, it decided to it decided to taunt me by changing the separation, dis uh, the node again. It switched the node back to the other one. Stupid thing. Grr, grumble, grumble, grumble. Grumble, 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 grumble. Yeah, actually, it makes most sense that we would see the correction in the radial uh, or the... Basically, you won't see any correction in the plane. I'm guessing that most of the variation is going to happen in the physics calculation. Uh, and it'll tend to happen within the plane, so you wouldn't need to adjust um, my adjust my um, inclination relative to the target. Here we go. 20, 19, 18, 17, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Oh, missed. Missed, but it was so close. I could practically feel the wind of that as it rushed by, except that there's no wind in space. But I tell you, looking at it, I'm pretty sure that I felt something. Okay, so I'm making more corrections here. Waiting in vain, perhaps, for the separation at closest approach to show the right value. This is on the rendezvous planner. You can make up your own custom window if you like. Uh, but that is the magic one on MechJeb, and you will need the 1.05 update, which is kind of hard to find right now, what with the Kerbal forums being in transition, let's say. There we go. It's coming in. Coming in. I think I'm going to make a little bit of a thrust to lift my rocket up just a bit. Come on. 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, whoa, wow, that was really close, how close was it, how close was it, that was that close, that close, yes, um, so here's the thing, collision physics is calculated by stepping time forward one frame at a time, and with 30 frames per second, 4 kilometers per second, you're moving over 100 meters per frame, these things probably just stepped through each other, so you need to be able to slow the physics time step down. And there's a mod that can do that in the form of Better Time Warp, which under Physics Warp lets you make Physics Warp slow things down to one-tenth normal speed. Armed with this new power to manipulate time, we once again set forth on our quest to, well, smash things together at really high speed. So we get our separation distance down, and again, you'll notice that the separation distance is, is kind of decreases when I'm in physics warp, but on rails, it's perfectly fine. 
So I just want to keep this thing on rails ra and rather, you know, regular time acceleration until we get really close and then we want to switch over to slow things down. A half, a quarter, point 0.2, point 0.1 and now we just watch this come in. Will this collide? Will this collide? Oh my goodness, this is so exciting and it's destroyed! Oh, look at that. Now just remember, that thing spinning like crazy is is actually 10 times slower than it should be. There we go, Bill, Jeb, everyone survived as well. So we successfully destroyed the rockets, wrote them off the insurance scam, and nobody died. So it isn't like some sort of crazy murder-suicide thing between Valentina and the boys. Okay, if you can't be bothered with all that faffing around in space, there's actually a way to make collisions happen really easily and avoid the whole problem of rendezvousing. So, if we go in here and we start a resume a game, I have actually got a save here. This is a it's a version of the International Space Station. It's put together by a guy called Adam. Uh, you can check out his YouTube channel, I'll link it at the bottom. Um, so he has, in space, a rather magnificent space station, right? And it's orbiting the Earth, and perhaps we want to make something collide with it, right? So how would we do that? Well, we could launch something into space, or we could just put something up there that collides with it. So let's go and put together a spaceship. Easy enough, here it is, sitting on the pad here. And I'm just going to hit F5 to save. Now, I'm going to go over to the saves directory and look at ISS. And look at the quick save. So I'm going to edit this with Notepad++. You can use plain old Notepad if, if you so choose. I'm going to use Notepad++ because it's faster and doesn't have the problems that regular Notepad has when you hit huge numbers of files. So I'm just going to look for the word vessel. And that will actually show us, if we match the whole word and match case, we can find them. So there's Orbiter 1A, and it says here that it's pre-launch, it's sitting on the space platform and all that. We've got some asteroid, we've got some debris, and if I just keep clicking through, we'll find the space station here. Now look, it's Solar Truss, Solar Truss, Airlock, obviously the guy that did this did it properly. Serious respect to that, right? So here is the space station. Now this is the thing we want to have a collision. And the important part of this here is the orbit. See this? This gives you the orbital parameters that are identical to it. So I'm just going to select those and control C, copy those. So now we're going to continue looking, find orbiter 1A, and then I'm going to just substitute these. Now that will put it on exactly the same orbit. Actually, no. What we've got to do first of all is we've got to change its situation to orbiting because it's sitting on the launch pad. We're going to say landed is false. And we've got to just get rid of this. That's the only thing. But this orbit right now is exactly the same as a space station. And it will just basically collide instantly as soon as you load this. So instead, what you want to do is give it an inclination, right? take this inclination and make it anything but this. Say make it 179, that will put it on an orbit which is directly opposite this thing, right? It will encounter it catastrophically, but of course it will probably phase through it. But if you save this, Control S, and then go back to the game and F9 to load it, we should be able to see that we're in pretty much an orbit going exactly opposite to the space station, right? So now if I time accelerate, we will fly around the planet and hopefully encounter each other head on. If I actually set my target, you should see that it says orbital encounter distance 0, 0, 0. I'm going to go in here and set my slow-mo physics warp here. It says my separation at closest approach is 1 meter. So let's just wait for this thing to happen. And of course, as soon as this actually gets close enough to encounter, we want to switch out of accelerated mode. Now, in time acceleration mode, when you're using on-rails acceleration, things are much more accurate, right? So I'm going to look uh, forward. What way are we going? This way. Oh, there we go. And then I'm going to switch to physics warp when I get close enough, right? And that wasn't close enough. There we go. 
Physics warp, physics warp, physics warp, as slow as the eye can see. The game is pausing so it can load this thing, and is it time acceleration has reached zero? Will we collide? Well, we can watch this in incredible slow-mo vision. This is looking good. This is looking very catastrophically good. And yes, blowing straight through it. This is going to be fabulous. Look at that. Game is thinking really hard. Yes, you can see my, my uh, cursor spinning there as everything just obliterates itself. <laughs> so that's one way to do it. That's, that's the easy way to do it to guarantee that you will get this impact. Look, there's stuff everywhere. Oh, man. Everything just flying around, spinning around like some insane spinny roundy thingy. Ah, there. That's something that looks rather more robust. Wonder if there's anyone on it. I guess not. Oh, look, it's going to have another collision. <laughs> Secondary debris collisions here. Yes. This is not a great thing. So, uh, one advantage of having the physics rate clank cranked down as low as it is, is it actually lets the game run a little smoother, and it means that it has more time to actually perform all these calculations. Um, but realistically, if you want to have this happen, you can go back, and instead of having 179, just make the inclination maybe 10 degrees. 10 degrees inclination is a lot more friendly. Uh, it's a lot lower velocity, it's a lot more likely for th that things will actually happen in a sane manner. And here, as they say in the business, is one I prepared earlier. Once again, well, actually, Adam prepared this, i got to say. You know, more mad props to the dude who launched all this pretty much by hand. It's a stock build from a couple of Kerbal versions ago. We see the orbiter approaching, but it's now approaching at a relative velocity nearer to a couple of hundred meters per second. So sometimes you're much more likely to get a collision, even without the time warp. But slowing the physics time down to one-tenth normal speed means that it's calculating ten times as many data points, which means it's calculating everything ten times more accurately. And look, you could almost see it as it slides through there at a, well, a few meters per second per, or a few meters per frame now. Look at that. Oh, that is beautiful, a beautiful pyrotechnic display, which of course makes very little sense in space. Explosions don't tend to look like big fireballs in space, at least as far as we know. Now thanks to post-processing, of course I can speed this up closer to regular speed so you can actually appreciate the destruction that's happening. Note all the stuff oscillating about on that giant truss segment as it floats away. And Jebediah Kerman there, surviving. He was apparently the smart one that decided to sit in the Soyuz. And he'll of course be able to return home, although I suspect he'll probably do some magnificently heroic stuff to rescue everyone else. Look at that! The whole thing just oscillating. It's kind of flapping its wings like a giant bird in space. A bird that has, of course, just been hit at hundreds of meters per second with a spacecraft. So yes, collisions in space, they're fun. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe. <laughs>